Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and today we're going to be talking about an event that's going to occur in the next few weeks, specifically uh, early April, maybe late March of 2018, of a falling object known as Tiangong 1. What? You're about to find out. Welcome to What The Math. <laughs> So what exactly is Tiangong 1? Well, as you could probably guess, it is something to do with China and specifically here, it's actually the first space station uh, made in China by China and launched by China and basically put in space by China. I just said Chinese so many times, I feel like Trump. Anywho, moving on with the story. Basically, this was a pretty exciting uh, space station that the Chinese were able to build and place in, uh, in the orbit. And it kind of sort of looks like this. Now, this is uh, basically an animation of the space station and uh, it was placed uh, into orbit around Earth back in 2011 as a kind of a test bed for various Chinese uh, space technologies. Basically, they tried to uh, create their own space station, but they wanted to see how all of this works. So they placed a, um, a kind of a test uh, module, test, test space station, that was then going to be used um, as a study for future modular stations they're going to create. And the actual space station is going to be launched in 2023, but Tiangong uh, served its purpose and they decided to kind of retire it. Except that they didn't really tell everyone that they also unofficially lost control of it. As a matter of fact, since 2016, China could not uh, control anything on the space station, so it was sort of tumbling down and slowly losing altitude and basically eventually will crash onto planet Earth. And this eventuality will occur very, very, very soon and will most likely look kind of like this. This is actually a video someone filmed back in the days when the Japanese Hayabusa spacecraft returned from an amazing mission where it was actually retrieving a piece of a comet. And luckily for us, we actually had debris that we were able to recover from this and thus collected the stuff collected from the comet. But this is kind of what it's going to look like. Um, here's the tricky part. The Tiangong 1 might actually be in your area or fly over your area and thus hypothetically, sort of, kind of, might strike you as a potential victim. Okay, okay, it, it's unlikely to happen, it's, the chance of it happening is like one in a billion, but it is there, the chance is there. So you might actually kind of be killed by a falling Chinese space station. That's a cool theme for a movie. Anyway, so the, uh, forget about what I just said. In, in the history of space travel, there was only one person ever uh, stroke, stricken, striken, hit by a space debris. As a matter of fact, this happened back in 1997, and uh, this was actually a woman just walking through a park in Oklahoma somewhere, and she got hit, like not even hit, she got scratched by a debris from a falling Delta rocket. Long story short, she's fine, she wasn't hurt, but it did happen. Will it happen with this particular uh, event? Well, also very unlikely, but here is the funny part. We have no idea where it's going to land. As a matter of fact, yeah, we can place a spacecraft extremely accurately and like have it pass by Pluto within, you know, a few kilometers uh, off course. Yet we have no idea where this thing is going to land. And I'm here on this website that actually shows you everything in space. As a matter of fact, the website is called Stuff in dot space. Uh, so if you were to type, like for example, if you were to type ISS, uh, you can go and check out where International Space Station is located this moment right now. It's right here. Um, and uh, even though it's not really called International Space Station, it's called Zarya. Um, it, this is this is it. This is ISS, and it's moving at uh, 7.66 kilometers per second. It's about 420 kilometers above ground, and it orbits with a period of 92 minutes. This is in real time. You can totally just go and see where it's located. Um, but we're not looking for ISS, we are looking for Tiang, Tiangong, Tiang, there it is. So there's two of them, this is the one we want to look at. Now this is the website you should actually go to when you, when you hear on the news that, oh no, it's coming down soon, so you know, watch it uh, progress through the upper atmosphere and crash. So this is the path it's taking, so I'm going to try to see if I can maybe show you a little bit better. So here we go. Uh, it's moving in this very unusual pathway uh, because it was launched from China, obviously, and so it, it did um, take this orbit. But it, it's basically moving through most of the Asia. It's kind of above some parts of Europe, specifically Italy, Spain, and um, 
some of the uh, Eastern Europe. It's passing through uh, quite a lot of uh, populated areas, as a matter of fact. Then there's some water here and uh, South America. Uh, specifically, I believe Venezuela, although it's kind of hard to see here, but uh, Brazil possibly and possibly some other countries like Chile. Or is that, is that, uh, that's not Chile, what is that? It's kind of hard to tell, but it's possibly Peru. So either Chile or Peru. But basically this is the pathway it currently has. And it's unlikely to change this very much. Oh, also Australia. Uh, I'm forgetting Australia and New Zealand here. It's kind of hard to see because it's dark there right now. Um, also, my country where I live right now is kind of dark as well. But, um, oh, and of course, Indonesia, Thailand, and all of these countries as well. If you are in South America, specifically this part of South America, or if you are in these parts of Europe, these parts of Asia, Australia, New Zealand, you might have... Well, first of all, you might have a cool show to watch, uh, specifically if this happens during the nighttime. But also, you might actually potentially have a one in a billion chance of being hit by a following Chinese debris. Um, pretty cool, though. I gotta admit, right? It sounds pretty cool. But the, uh, it's very likely it's probably going to crash somewhere in the water. Uh, most likely somewhere in the ocean, either here or here, but since we have no control over where it's going to land, it might actually totally just go anywhere it wants. Right now, the chance of it hitting the water is slightly higher, though. Um, but he here's the funny thing about this, is that uh, China will then be responsible for cleaning all of this up, and also China will be responsible for any damages caused. Um, back in the day, the Soviet Union actually had a satellite uh, smack into the middle of Canada, and they, they paid, like, millions and billions of dollars for the cleanup that uh, and damage that it caused to the country even though there was actually kind of an official cold war going on so china will most likely have to pay a lot of money unless of course it crashes into china which means like i guess parts of tibet here uh which well in this case it will most likely just hit the mountain and maybe um not really cause any serious damage uh, but this will be a cool event to observe. So, like I said, uh, the current estimates are approximately April 4th, plus minus one week. And the reason it's plus minus is because if you look at the altitude right now, it's basically already entering the upper atmosphere. It's um, anywhere between 225 kilometers to 247 kilometers. So it's already grazing the upper atmosphere. But it's always sort of in a different position because it's, it's spinning and turning. So if it's actually facing sideways, then it will most likely receive more friction and thus fall sooner. But if it's sort of going straight, straight ahead, um, it will not really produce as much friction and thus maybe last a little bit longer. So at this point, it's totally unpredictable, just sort of literally tumbling down and spinning around and falling into uh, Earth's atmosphere. And as you can see, it's about half the altitude of ISS. It's also, uh, its period is about 89 minutes. Its velocity is also decreasing and it's slowly tumbling down but this is a really cool site to basically keep up on the all the stats and all the telemetry from the station and thus see when it actually starts totally falling down so when you start seeing this number go down dramatically you know it's about to crash into uh into the planet um and if you're good at writing code you can actually write a code that will notify you when the altitude is below 200 kilometers well, anyway, that's all I wanted to talk about, and I think it's a pretty exciting event. Uh, maybe a little bit scary, but, you know, don't be too scared. The chances of being hit by debris is extremely, extremely small. Um, but it will definitely be an interesting event to observe, specifically from a perspective of just geoglobal politics. I, I kind of wonder what China is going to do after it actually does cause some damage to some country somewhere. Anyway, thank you so much for watching, and hopefully in the next video we'll be able to actually maybe even simulate this as it happens, uh, using gr games like Kerbal Space Program, but I really want to see where it happens first. And maybe we'll even get to see someone filming this, that would be actually pretty amazing. Just like uh, the Mir station back in 2001 when it crashed into the ocean, um, it was a pretty interesting event, and this one is just as, as exciting as well. Anyway, thank you so much for watching, guys. I'll see you tomorrow. Space out. Come back tomorrow to watch something else and to learn something new. And as always, bye-bye.